Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna dive into a few different things. First off with the must have resources that you should have as a beginner content creator in 2024. So to lead us off, I think that one of the most underrated apps out there is Notion. A lot of people would say that it is overrated, but considering a lot of people use it for like school related content, I think that it is definitely underused or poorly used when it comes to regular scheduling as far as like content creation. I think that Notion has a lot of potential if you know how to use it. And the biggest thing that I've noticed lately is how valuable Notion has become to me and my personal schedule. Like by any means am I on the level of like an expert when it comes to Notion. I'm still very much a beginner, but I like that you can use it across platforms. You can use it on your phone. You can use it on your computer. It's easily accessible on multiple multiple devices, especially if you're editing on multiple devices. One of the best things about it also is the amount of free resources that are out there on the internet. For me, most of the templates that I use on Notion, I've found for free and I didn't have to create an entire template just for myself. But yeah, I have a few different templates that I have um, downloaded but all of them I found free. It's it's definitely something that you should be utilizing if you need something for scheduling or like keeping track of things. I really, really like Notion. I wanna get more acquainted with it so that I can use it to its full potential. But yeah, so moving on. The next app that I think is vital if you're a beginner and you don't have any experience doing editing of any sort, I would recommend CapCut. I've heard a lot of good things about CapCut and I have it myself, but since I do most of my editing on my laptop, I don't use my phone to edit videos. However, another resource that is, um, you might not know about if you're, you know, starting out is TikTok. TikTok has a built-in like editing platform where you upload the videos and you edit them all within the app. And I've heard CapCut is very similar to it. However, some small differences like the uploading resolution and things like that. Some people say that TikTok reduces the resolution and the quality of your videos. So um, if you're someone that is using your phone or like any other handheld device, CapCut would be a good one to um, experiment with and um, gain more knowledge about. Also, they have a lot of templates that people use. Um, a lot of times they go viral, things like that. So you've probably seen them before in some way. So yeah, definitely take advantage of that. If you're someone that is consistently gonna be like just TikTok, just short form videos, then I would definitely recommend CapCut or TikTok. However, if you're someone that wants to do more long form content, it might be easier for you to download a larger editing software and that's gonna be able to process the file sizes that you have because YouTube videos can be very hefty when it comes to just the overall size of them. That leads me into the next topic, which is Final Cut Pro. For my video editing, I have used Final Cut Pro 10 for probably the last four or five years. Like I think I got it in when I was still in high school. So yeah, like four or five years, I've been using the same editing software. It is on the more pricier side. So if you're looking for something that is, you know, on the cheaper side, obviously there are other alternatives such as For me personally, I really like the way that the software is set up and I'm used to editing in that format now. So I probably would stick with Final Cut Pro for years to come if I'm being completely honest. So another very useful platform that I've recently got a subscription with is Upbeat. So if you're uploading YouTube videos and you're trying to get monetized eventually, you have to be very careful about um, like YouTube strikes and things like that because if you use copyrighted music, you could get a strike on your account and you wanna try to avoid that at all costs. And so with Upbeat, you basically get the license to 
the songs so anytime you use them it gives you like a little copy paste thing that you just you copy it and then you paste it into your YouTube video description and that will protect you from like any potential flags going off as far as like copyright issues and things like that and copyright claims. Personally I think this is one of the most valuable resources when it comes to starting a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's like very it's not really talked about as much so um, if you are starting out just be very careful about that and be aware that if you get those strikes you know it could lead to you getting your account shut down and you want to avoid that at all costs. The next one is going to be obviously your notes app in your phone. I cannot explain to you how valuable my notes app is to me. Like I have everything in my notes app. So I don't know what that is, but anytime you get a YouTube video idea, you know you can go into your notes, write it down really quickly. Or if you're just like looking to figure out and compile a list of ideas or things that you'd like to discuss, you know, things like that, your notes app is gonna be your best friend when it comes to that. So make sure you're utilizing it because you don't wanna lose those ideas in the moment. It's just like when you think of something in the shower, like you want to make sure that you are getting those things down because if you are near burning out it's good to have some other things in your archives or you know in the back of your head that you can think about because it's very easy to get burnt out on content like, there's a lot that goes into creating videos and if you are someone that needs that motivation and things like that like as you go I feel like keeping myself a list of things that I can do and focus on helps me to prolong my motivation and longevity as far as staying consistent and staying on top and staying on myself and staying on schedule. So the next app um, that is probably my favorite, my all-time favorite app on this list, and that is gonna be Canva. Canva has been with me ride or die for probably 10 years like I love Canva I don't even know what year it came out but it feels like it's been 10 years since I used it but no Canva is probably the best resource because you can make YouTube video um, thumbnails you can make outros and intros on Canva now you can do um, videos on Canva if you need to edit videos you can also do them into Canva as well you can make planners on Canva you can literally do anything if you wanted to to type out a to-do list you could do that on Canva. Canva is my all-time favorite. I do pay for the premium or the whatever it's called the plus um, but I, it is definitely a charge that is justified because of how much I use Canva. I probably use Canva at least once or twice a week depending on you know what my schedule is like but I use it for college. I, I use it for YouTube. I use it for extracurricular things. I use it for um, like anything to do with my writing on the side making book covers like things of that nature like I built pretty much everything about myself on Canva like logos yeah I have a lot of projects in in Canva and I'm really grateful for Canva and so glad that I found it because it is a lifesaver and also it helps because you can do everything yourself so if you're the type that is wanting to do everything yourself as opposed to finding someone else to do it for you or paying for it if funds are low Canva also has you know a free version so you don't have to necessarily necessarily pay for the premium. I just get it because of all the other things that I'm using Canva for. But the free version is obviously going to be sustainable as well if that's something that you're just doing in the beginning. I don't want anyone to feel like you have to immediately go out and buy these subscriptions or these um, premiums and or pluses or you know what I mean? Like starting out, just focus on the free stuff. Keep it simple and keep it easy for yourself. Okay, so the last resource that I'll go over today is going to be a Canon app. This is dependent on a few things. One, if you have a camera and two, what type of camera that you have. If you decide to go get a camera, I know a lot of people, you know, you can't immediately go get one when you start a channel, but if you are one of the ones that have a camera already or go out and get a camera, make sure you're checking to see if there are compatible apps that will allow you to like send stuff to your phone and like transport things because that'll help speed up your editing process. It'll also increase the resolution from like pictures and things like that. Like the quality is going to be a lot better if you can upload it to your phone that way. If you're someone that has a camera, yeah, that's definitely a great resource that you should be using, especially if you aren't already and you do have a camera. So thank you guys so much for watching. That is my list of apps that I think you should be using, especially if you're starting a new channel in 2024. I wanna wish you guys all a happy new year and a successful journey in whatever it is that you would like to achieve this year. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching, bye.